You often read forum posts or video comments about certain software synthesizers being CPU hungry, using a lot of CPU processing power. But is that really an issue with modern PCs in 2022? And how much difference is there between different software synths? I'm really curious about this myself, and I hope you are too. So let's do some slightly scientific, but more musical tests to find out. So what we'll do today is put together a little musical composition with different tracks on each track. We'll have different software instruments and we'll do a measurement of the CPU load in real time usage as we mix and arrange a song. OK, so here is my project in Reaper. I have four tracks here with the pretty pastel colours. We have a lead track at the top. We have bass, we have pad and we have some plucked chords. The reason I'm using Reaper today for this task is that one, it has a nice CPU performance meter showing the CPU load of the plugins on each track. The second thing is that you can have multiple instances of a VST or VST plugins on one track like this. So I've loaded up seven different software synthesizers on each track. And what I will do is I'll play through this track seven times and then I'll go through each track and disable one of the synths and then enable the others. So you'll hear one version of the track using Silent One and then another version using Diva on each track and so on. I haven't made any attempt to match the sounds or get them exactly the same. I don't think it matters when we're doing a CPU test, but I have got roughly the same sounds from the same category. And yes, I realize the CPU usage may vary between presets depending on which effects you load and the type of oscillator and so on. But by choosing four different instances of the plugin, on one instance per track, then we'll get a little bit of variation there. And I think it will probably cancel itself out and we'll get a good average value for each synthesizer. So for example, here is the song then with one instance of Silent One on each track. So it is just a four bar or eight bar loop or something, but what I will do when we do the tests is I will improvise on the lead line here. So it shouldn't get too monotonous, I hope, and at least we'll be changing out the instruments every time we listen to it. This is not only a test, by the way, of the CPU usage, but it's also interesting, I think, to hear the character of these different software synths. So we'll be testing Silent One, which Lenart Digital claim has very low CPU usage. Very lightweight plug-in, they say. Well, we'll put that to the test. Then we have Diva, which has the opposite reputation. This has a reputation of using a lot of CPU, something that you he actually make quite proud claims of, because they say you need to use a lot of CPU to get the most accurate analog emulation, hence perhaps the name Diva. But this is a 10 year old plugin. So does it use a lot of CPU on a relatively modern PC? Well, we'll find out. We have Contact. I've heard people complain about Contact using a lot of CPU, even when you're not playing any notes. That's not something that I've experienced, and we'll test that as well today. But uh, I wanted to fire up uh, some instances of Contact here to test the CPU that it uses. This is a sampled instrument here, Retro Machines, part of the factory library. So four instances of that, we'll find out how much CPU it uses. Then we have Cherry Audio DC-0106, a recently released Juno emulation. Let's see how this one stacks up. Then we have Serum, another synthesizer that has a reputation for using a lot of CPU. But again, this is relatively old in the tooth now, so let's see how it stacks up. Then we have two synths from Native Instruments, first Massive, which was widely known as using a lot of CPU when it was released, but that was 15 or 20 years ago. So I'm assuming it's going to be negligible on modern hardware, but we'll soon find out. Finally, then we have Massive X, which was a new version of Massive released a couple of years ago. 
So we'll see how that one fares. You can see actually it took quite a long time to load the instance here. That's certainly something I've noticed before even doing any CPU measurements. It takes an age to load this project with all of the plugins. Yeah, we've got seven on each track. So that's seven, 14, 28 instances of the software since. And what we'll do as a special treat at the end, I will activate all of them on every track. So we'll get a monster layer on every track. And that should sound really awesome with these seven really impressive synthesizers all playing at the same time on each track. There we go, enable the last two there. And then we have the performance meter down at the bottom. So this is showing us the overall CPU usage at the moment and the memory usage for that matter, disk read, disk write. This is more interesting to us how much CPU the plugins are using. We have 32 at the moment. I have some on the master bus, but they are currently disabled. Yeah, most of these plugins are inactivated, of course. They'll only be four activated at the same time, one on each track. And we can actually see here the CPU usage per track. And it's typically the pad and the plucks that use the most because I'm playing more notes at the same time, whereas lead and bass is just one note at a time. So we'll play through the tracks and we'll monitor this information. I'll make a note of the results and I'll show you some nice charts. And by the way, keep in mind that as I'm recording this, I'm using a separate instance of Reaper to capture my audio, the microphone, and what I'm playing here in the DAW, also screen capture. So there's quite a lot going on on my PC. I could mention also for you that my PC is four years old, perhaps. It's a mid-range Ryzen PC, the processor cost a couple of hundred bucks. So we're not talking a real high-end PC here. And yeah, I'm running Windows. <laughs>
So the results are in. I watched the video as I played it back to get a feel for the average CPU load. So here are the numbers. And remember, these are CPU percentage, but for four instances. Of course, we were running four different tracks. So four instances of Silent 1 was 1.3%. Diva was 6. Contact 2.2. .2. DCO 106, 6.2. Higher than I was expecting. Serum, 2.5. Massive 2, Massive X wins on the CPU consumption with 6.3. Again, remember, this is for four instances of Massive X. So what's that? 1.5% per instance, which is still pretty negligible. So the nice graphs I've put together for you here then. On the left, you can see how it looks like with a scale of 100%. So you can see with four plug-in instances. I've got tons of headroom here. And yes, we can see there are slight differences between these, but it really doesn't matter. It's negligible in the scheme of things. I've zoomed in a little bit here on the right, so the scale goes up to 7% CPU. And here we can see the differences between the soft synths anyway, which is interesting. Diva, for example, uses four times more. Well, Diva, DCO106, uh, surprisingly high CPU load here for their uh, vintage Juno emulation. Massive X, as you probably would expect with all of the effects and the latest sound engine, is also using about six. So these are all three about the same there. About four times more than Silent, for example. Contact, Serum. Serum, surprisingly low and massive, although it used a lot of CPU uh, when it was released 15 years later. It's next to nothing. If we flip this around, I can show you a different way of looking at this. These are the maximum number of instances I can run on my PC before I hit the ceiling, the 100% CPU load. So Silent 1, a staggering 300 instances. And this might be relevant if, you're, if you like to layer up your signs, for example. Of course, that will use double the number of instances if you use two layers. So Silent 1, 300. But even for Diva, that's got a reputation for having a very high CPU load, I can fire up 67 instances of that before I hit the limits. Here you can see another graph then showing that information, the number of plugins that I can max have on my mid-range PC that's three or four years old. And I don't have a graph for it, but when I fired up all of the plugin instances at the same time, so that was 40, 20, 30 plugins, something like that, that was consuming just 10%. So, yeah, that seems to confirm the data that we're seeing here as well. These, of course, then are my own results, but I'd love to hear your own experiences. So, please do let us know in the comments are CPU hungry plugins? an issue for you. My conclusions from this then is that yes, there are some differences between the CPU usage of different plugins, but it doesn't really matter. I mean, who cares if Diva uses one and a half percent for an instance or Silent uses 0.3 percent. It really doesn't matter because it's such a small amount anyway. So for the track counts that I'm using and probably most of you, it really doesn't matter. Even running 30 soft synths at the same time really didn't have much effect on my CPU load and my PC was still just cruising. So next time I see forum posts or comments about a soft synth being CPU hungry, then I'll think to myself, well, it really doesn't matter at all unless you have an ancient PC, perhaps. So for me, it's a complete non-issue at least. And remember that if you do run into CPU issues, you can always freeze or bounce your MIDI tracks with the soft synths in place, convert them to a WAV file and have that playing back in your DAW as well to save some CPU resources and memory resources for that matter. Okay, the moment you've all been waiting for, now let's play through this track one more time, but with all of the plugins activated on all of the tracks.
Yeah, that was quite impressively huge sounding, no doubt about it. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you enjoyed the video as well. I'll see you again next time. Cheerio.